that's a good one. That's a real good one. Guys, that fish right there just came on a uh, uh, tungsten thunder cricket. It's a half ounce. It's like a blue crawl color. I got that paired with a uh, big bite bait kamikaze swim on and uh, green pumpkin shark. Guys, how's it going? Um, we are hanging out here in the garage, um, and I have a whole setup here um, to talk about in this video. Um, this has probably been one of my most requested videos. Um, either through Instagram or on the YouTube channel. Um, in this video, we're gonna be talking about chatterbaits. Um, and this, hopefully by the end of this video, this would be the last video you ever need to watch on chatterbaits, um, just because I'm gonna cover everything from types of chatterbaits and when to use those types of chatterbaits, um, at least from my experience, when they work the best. Um, trailers and um, colors of trailers to use on those chatterbaits, um, the gear that I use to fish my chatterbaits, and some different retrieves um, that can go out there and help you catch some fish. Um, so without further ado, let's jump right into it. Look at that right there. Chatterbait right in the top of the mouth. Perfect like you want it. Right, right there's a good one. But before I hop right into that and talk about the different types of chatterbaits, um, I know this is going to be a longer video and I know some of you may not want to watch the whole thing. Um, so I'm going to give you the one chatterbait that I would pick up um, if I only had one, one trailer, one chatterbait. I'll show you what I'm using. And I actually have that tied on to my chatterbait rod right now. Um, that one chatterbait would be a 3 8 ounce Z-Man chatterbait elite um, in white. And then as a trailer on that, I would use, um, this is a 5.5 hog farmer spunk shad. Um, and the color on that is blizzard gizzard. Um, so if I had to pick up one chatterbait, go out there, catch fish this would be the one that I pick up like I said I have it tied on to my combo right now so to tell you a little bit about why that would be the one that I would pick up um, first of all white is a pretty good universal color to catch fish on a chatterbait and um, the, the chatterbait elite I know that's a little different a lot of people would say if they had to pick up one they would pick up a jackhammer um, the reason I stray away from the jackhammer um, is simply because of the price. Um, I love a jackhammer. In fact, I'm going to talk about one here in a little bit. Um, but if I had to pick up one, it would be the Chatterbait Elite just because it's about half the price. You get a wire tied skirt um, and it has very, very similar action. Um, the head design isn't as good. Um, the hook is fairly good. I'm not going to say it's as good. Um, as the the jackhammer but it's a very good hook like i said you get wire tied skirt um fairly good components and it's half the price of the um jackhammer um as far as the hog farmer spunk shad the reason i would pick that one um is because it's so universal you can do so many different things with it and i really like the blizzard gizzard color um just because it's white on uh, like the bottom half of it's white and the top half of it's like a, a, a clear with some silver flake in it. Um, very good job. It does a very good job of mimicking bait fish um, and it has great action. As far as types of chatterbaits go, um, I use about four different brands of chatterbaits. 
Um, I use a whole line of Z-Man chatterbaits. Um, I'll talk about the Berkeley Slobber Knocker as well. Um, the Strike King Thunder Cricket. And then I customize um, some bladed jigs of my own. Um, and I feel like they have a time and a place. And I'm going to talk about that as well. Um, and their design is slightly different than the other three. And I feel like that is a, a big part of when it plays a role. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to jump right into this. Um, I mentioned the Z-Man Chatterbait Elite. Um, that's the one out of the Z-Man line of Chatterbaits that I use the most. I uh, tend to go with a 3 8 ounce um, or a half ounce. That's typically where I stay with my Chatterbaits um, as far as weights go. Um, and as far as the Chatterbait Elites, I have tons and tons of different colors of those. Um, I, my, the ones I pick up the most is like a white, white and chartreuse. Um, and that's, that's pretty much it. Um, I try to keep my colors pretty simple. Um, with the Chatterbait Elites, I do have some like green pumpkins, um, some more natural colors, a little bit of green pumpkin with like a pearl belly. Um, there's like a, a red bone color that I really like. Um, Houdini is a really good color as well. Um, so as far as Chatterbait Elites, that's what I'm using. Just to show you um, some, kind of some components of a Chatterbait Elite. I don't know how well you'll be able to see this. Um, but it has a wire tied skirt. It's got a copper wire tie on there. Um, this Chatterbait Elite is in white and chartreuse. Um, the thing I like about this one as well, that white and chartreuse, it has a gold blade on it. I don't know how well you can see that, but it has a gold blade um, compared to um, some of the other Chatterbait Elites. This is the white one that I have tied on my rod. It has a silver blade on it. Um, I really like that gold blade in a little bit muddier water, which is also when I would pick up the white and chartreuse. Um, other lines of uh, Z-Man Chatterbaits that I use um, is the big blade Chatterbait. Um, so to compare sizes of blades um, this right here the white and chartreuse is a chatterbait elite and then this one right here is the big blade chatterbait they are um the big blade chatterbait excuse me the big blade chatterbait comes in a uh, half ounce that's the size that i use with that um, and then this one is in a 3 8 ounce and as you can see the blade substantially bigger um, I use a big blade chatterbait um, in one condition and one condition only and that's when the water is really really muddy. Um, with this big blade um, it gives a really good loud thumping action. Um, it has a lot of like side to side movement as well. Um, it's very loud. Um, it helps the fish find that a little bit better in that muddy water. Um, this color right here I believe is like bruised. It's like got some green pumpkin, some blue, some some black in there. Um, I do like that color a whole lot. And I believe that's about the only color I own in the Big Blade Chatterbait. And I, like I said, I use that in muddy water. Um, as far as um, chatterbaits that I could use all the time. Um, probably my go-to chatterbaits. If it's not a chatterbait elite, it would be a jackhammer. Um, and this right here is one of my favorite colors in the jackhammer. This is called Green Pumpkin Shad. Um, it's green pumpkin on one side, and then it's like this white or pearlish color on the other side. Um, really like this um, this color, especially in clear water. Um, and like I said, this is one of my go-to chatterbaits. Um, if the water's a little bit more stained, I go with a black and blue jackhammer. Um, as far as Z-Man Chatterbaits, the only other one that I use is the Minimax. I really like the Minimax Chatterbait um, in a couple conditions. Um, number one, in really, really clear water. Um, if the water is really, really clear, I like to downsize my profile. Um, and this uh, Minimax has a, a little bit smaller blade on it, as you can see. This is the Chatterbait Elite. This is the Minimax. With that smaller blade, um, the action isn't um, as substantial. Um, the, it's a little bit less of a vibration to it. Um, and it's a lot smaller downsized profile than the Chatterbait Elite. 
so I really like that in clear water. Um, as far as other conditions when I would fish this um, is when everyone's throwing just a, a standard chatterbait or a jackhammer. Um, I like to downsize that profile, just show the fish something a little different. You tend to get more bites. Um, I also, I'm here in southeast Ohio where I'm fishing a lot, and a lot of the time I'm fishing around smaller fish, so I throw this um, quite a bit, and I really like the Mini Max Chatterbait. Alright, um, so now that I've finished talking about Z-Man, I'm going to move over and talk about the second brand of Chatterbaits that I use, um, and that's the Berkeley Slobber Knocker. Um, as far as the Berkeley Slobber Knocker goes, um, this one here is a 3 8 ounce. Um, this is in the herring color. Um, I really like this color um, just because it gives that natural profile. It's got like a clearish, whitish um, skirt and then a little bit of green pumpkin. It's very similar to that green pumpkin shad jackhammer that I really like. Um, and when I use the Berkeley Slobber Knocker, um, is around wood cover, hard cover. Um, and I, I do that simply because of, of the head design. Um, I don't know how well you guys will be able to see this. Um, and the, and the reason for that is this blade, it does not have a lot of side to side movement. And because of that, um, when you fish a chatterbait, if you come over a log in that chatterbait with that chatterbait, it's going to want to roll over. Um, and then that's what hangs you up. So with this um, head design and this blade design, it doesn't have a lot of that side to side movement. Um, it tends to not roll over as much and snag that hook into that hard cover. So I really like fishing this one around hard cover. Obviously you can fish it out in open water. Um, you can fish it around docks, all of those things. Um, but this one really shines for me around laydowns and hard cover. Um, the other color that I have in that that I really like is this one. This again, very natural color. Um, this I believe is Bama Brim. Um, it's also in 3 8 ounce, but again, um, kind of that same head design um, that doesn't give that blade a lot of movement, so it doesn't roll over as much. Um, and I really like that, like I said, around that hard cover. Um, that's when this uh, Berkeley Slobber Knocker shines for me. Um, that does not mean that you can't take these out um, and just fish them like you would, uh, you know, a standard Z-Man chatterbait, just any chatterbait, um, any chatterbait. You can fish this. Um, I've caught fish out on main lake points with this exact chatterbait right here um, in, in the early, early spring. Um, like I said, it does it does a good job. Um, I've put in a lot of time with this since I've picked it up. Um, and where I found it to shine for me is around that hardcover. Another brand of um, bladed jigs, chatterbaits that I use um, is the Strike King Thunder Cricket. Um, but not necessarily the regular Thunder Cricket. They uh, recently came out with a Tungsten Thunder Cricket. And I really, really, really like that tungsten thunder cricket um as far as head designs um just to give you some size comparison here i'll try to hold these side by side um try to get this lined up here um that z-man head that you're seeing there is a 3 8 ounce head and then the tungsten thunder cricket head that you're seeing there is actually a half ounce head um so actually that tungsten head is a little bit smaller than the the lead head on the Z-Man chatterbait, and it's a half ounce versus the three eighth ounce. Um, so that's a reason that I really like this. Um, the other reason I really like the tungsten Thunder Cricket is it just has a different sound underwater. Um, because instead of vibrating off tungsten, that blade is um, going, or instead of vibrating off lead, that blade going back and forth is hitting tungsten. Just has a little bit different sound, and I really like that. Um, the other thing that I didn't know if I would like when I first picked this up, and it's kind of hard to see, um, but the skirt on this is a little thinner than like a traditional Z Man skirt. Um, the strands of the skirt's a little thinner, um, and it's not as full of a skirt. And 
I really like that, especially when I'm throwing these natural colors. Um, with those strands of that skirt being a little thinner, um, they tend to have a little bit more movement, um, which I feel like can help draw some bites at times. Um, this particular Tungsten Thunder Cricket is in the blue crawl color. It's really, really hard to see, but there's a little bit of hue of blue in there. Um, this one is by far my favorite um, design, like the color of those Tungsten Thunder Crickets. And I use this a lot um, around the bluegill spawn and when the bluegill are up shallow. And I like to pair that up with some sort of natural um, color as well, very similar to this. Um, and I've caught some really, really good fish. Um, when the bluegill were up shallow around boat docks and boat lifts and stuff like that on this exact chatterbait. Um, the other time that this particular chatterbait really, really shined for me, um, I had a day earlier this year, I believe it was in June, I went to um, Alum Creek um, targeting smallmouth and we had like 15 to 20 mile an hour winds. Um, and one of my favorite lures to throw in the wind is a spinnerbait. I also really like to throw a chatterbait in the wind. Um, and obviously I was trying to target smallmouth. Um, so I picked up that same blue crawl color. And as you can see, this one is just mangled. Eyes are missing off of it. Um, the skirt is really, really thinned out because strands have been pulled out of it and stuff. Um, but I, I picked this chatterbait up and started tossing it around. And I probably caught 15 or 20 fish that was right around two pounds um, smallmouth on this. And I think um, that has a lot to do with this trailer. Um, this trailer right here is a big bite bait kamikaze swim on. And that trailer color is green pumpkin chartreuse swirl. Um, and throughout this, it's green pumpkin, but it has some chartreuse mixed in. And the tails on this, um, it, uh, is, it has a little bit of a chartreuse um, hue to it and so in the water um, it looks very similar to an actual bluegill tail so I like that trailer especially around the bluegill spawn when the bluegill are up shallow um, but the smallmouth they tend to like the brighter colors and stuff and so that's where um, that chatterbait really shined for me I caught my PB smallmouth on that exact chatterbait that exact setup right there so really like that one as well I also mentioned that um, I customized some of my own chatterbaits, um, and I, I do that because I'm looking for something very specific, um, and I was able to find that. Um, now I'll show you a couple different ones that I've done. Um, I'll show you one first, um, that I'm really, really excited about. I actually haven't even tossed this around yet, but I really like the color. Um, that's this one. This is in a, like a Rayburn Red, um, and that trailer on there um, is a missile bait spunk shad. Um, the thing that you will notice about this bladed jig specifically that's different from every other bladed jig um, that I've showed you so far is the head design. Um, this head um, is connected to the blade with a split ring. Um, and all these other ones have a direct connection. Um, and where I really like my bladed jigs to be connected, or my blades to be connected to the head with a split ring, is when I'm straight retrieving. Um, I have a, you'll see later in this video, if you continue watching, the different types of retrieves um, that I like. I also show you some action of some of the trailers. Um, and one of those that I show you is this. Um, this is a bladed jig that I customized that doesn't have a skirt on it. It's just got a trailer on it. Um, it's got that same head design um, with the, the blade being connected by a split ring. Um, where this shines is on the straight retrieve. Um, when you are straight retrieving this, this has the most erratic action of any chatterbait I've ever seen. Um, this thing will be just swimming along and all of a sudden it'll cut off to the side. Um, it'll come back straight, cut off to the other side. It just absolutely goes insane in the water and fish go nuts for it. Um, 
if you throw it around with a skirt, it has a lot of the same action, but you get that secondary movement of that skirt pulsing, um, and it tends to draw a lot of bites. Um, the other thing with this blade design um, that I've noticed, um, something that I'm not um, super excited about, especially, is um, this tends to run a lot more shallower than um, the chatterbaits with the the blade connected directly to the head um, but because it runs shallower that means you have to retrieve it slower but with that slower retrieve you still get that crazy erratic action that hunting action of it moving side to side and it just is insane action in the water hopefully you stick around to that part of the video to see that um, but I mentioned this one without a skirt um, this would be one that I'm straight retrieving um, when the fish are pressured. Um, if they are um, super clear water in the summertime, everyone's throwing a chatterbait around grass and stuff, I pick this one up because you don't have that giant profile um, of the skirt flaring as it's moving through the water. It literally just looks like a little bait fish swimming. Um, with some vibration to it um, and I really like this um, this trailer here is a Yamamoto Zeiko um, and this is the one that I show later in the video with the, the retrieve of this thing swimming through the water with this exact trailer if it did not have the blade on there it literally just looks like a little bait fish swimming through the water um, like I said the action is crazy um, and it is amazing around pressured fish just straight retrieving um, and that's something that I'll talk about later I actually don't do a whole lot of straight retrieve but if I do I have this one tied on because the action is just that incredible um, next thing I want to jump into is trailers that I use on my chatterbaits um, this is gonna seem like it's crazy crazy complicated but I promise it's really not um, I basically break my trailers down into two categories. I have a bait fish profile and a crawl profile, and that's that's pretty much it. Um, as far as the different trailers that I like to use, um, there's tons of them, just because there's some little subtle differences between all of them um, that really, really work, and um, some of the color profiles you can only get in certain trailers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my bait fish profiles and I'll start with the ones that have the least amount of action and move to the ones that have the most amount of action. So if I'm looking for a bait fish profile, you can't get any better one than this. This is the Yamamoto Zeiko. This is not the boot tail. Um, this is just a regular tailed trailer, split tailed trailer. Um, You'll notice that as far as my trailers, I don't use paddle tails at all. Um, and that's because I believe there's so many better trailer options out on the market for chatterbaits. Um, and they do make this in a, like a paddle tail or boot tail style trailer, but I just prefer um, the one without the paddle tail. Um, just because that boot tail or paddle tail tends to fight the action of the chatterbait um, where you re using a trailer like this you're relying on the chatterbait to give you the most action um, this thing looking at it looks like it would have a ton of action but it really doesn't in my opinion compared to some of these others um, and the reason I think I like it so much is because it can have a subtle action it looks just like a bait fish um, but by working the chatterbait itself, by working your rod or your reel, you can give this thing a crazy amount of action. And I really like that. Um, I basically use two colors in this. This is like a, a white or a sight flash or like a white and then uh, like a pearl or a clear with a silver flake. And then I use black and blue. Obviously, I use this in muddy water, this in clear water.
Um, another trailer that I use a lot, and I, I tend to find myself using this um, quite often, is just a fluke. Um, a fluke, if you see the action of this in the water, you would think, oh, that shouldn't be a chatterbait trailer, but it actually has really good action. Um, if I have no clue what trailer to use on a chatterbait, I just put a fluke on there. Um, and just, I can do a little bit of everything with it as far as retrieves. Um, the colors I like, this is a pearl. Um, for natural profiles, I use the watermelon red. And then I have two different colors that are very, very similar. Um, this one here is called Bait Fish. Um, this is a newer one that I just picked up recently and I really like it. Um, it is basically the same as this, but it has a little bit bigger flake. Um, I like this in um, a little bit sunnier days. Um, and then this one is like the Smoke and Shad color. The flake is um, a little bit smaller in this. Um, I just like this anytime. I mean, this is a good color, um, especially in clear water. Um, but if it's clear water, really sunny out, I like this one just because it has a little bit more flash to it. And this one, again, without the big flake, that's the smoke and shad color. Um, moving on to the next bait fish profile trailer um, we're just moving away from more of like the split tail um, style trailer that you saw with the Zayco and with the fluke um, and moving into the missile bait spunk shad um, the spunk shad is probably one of my favorite trailers um, it probably is my favorite chatterbait trailer just because of the action you can see on that thing um, as far as the missile bait spunk shad um i actually prefer the hog farmer version a little bit more um these two here are the same size and as you can see i feel like the hog farmer spunk shad just has a little bit more action i feel like um the the plastic is a little bit softer and the hog farmer version um and so it has a little bit more action. I like the reason I'm using that hog farmer spunk shad or spunk shad type trailer is because of the action that it has. Um, I do like um, some of the missile bait ones. Um, this is obviously in like a crawl color um, early spring. This one works really well. Um, if it's waters are muddy, I'm going to use something like this. This is like, uh, I believe this is bruiser flash. And then if the water is really, really clear, I'm going to use something like this. This is like Gobi Bite, I believe, is the color of this one. Um, I really like the Missile Bait Spunk Shad just because um, they offer some really good colors in that. Um, but like I said, if I had to pick between the two, I would go with the Hog Farmer Spunk Shad just because the plastic seems to be a little bit softer. Um, and... I believe it has a little little bit more action um, very very subtle differences um, and because I mentioned the hog farmer spunk shad um, that's one that I pick up this is probably my go-to trailer um, this color right here specifically this is um, the blizzard gizzard color um, on this the top half of this is like a clear with silver flake the bottom half is a white um, little subtle differences in this um, that I have really started to pick up on because this is two different colors I have found that um, and because this overall is very very similar top to bottom profile that you can draw more bites by using the color of the chat or of the trailer to your advantage um, and what I mean by that is 
Um, the last couple of weekends I've been fishing at Seneca, the water's been slightly stained and I've been fishing this white side down. Um, and I've been catching a lot of really good fish. Um, my, the head of my trailer started to tear up a little bit and where the hook point come out started to tear up a little bit up here on top. So what I did was I flipped this trailer over. Um, just to try to conserve plastics and when I did that this the clear side was down and that a little bit more stained water I stopped getting bit um, so just little subtle differences like that go a long way as far as um, drawing bites um, the other colors I like if the water is really clear this is electric shad and then I really like this color on some of those more natural profiles um, I like this color pairing it with like this green pumpkin shad this color is called Tennessee magic it's like a green pumpkin magic on top and then a pearl belly um, really really works well um, for those natural profiles as far as the spunk shad goes um, the two sizes that I use is the the 4.5 and the 5.5 um, if I'm around a little bit smaller bait fish, I'm going to go with a smaller profile. Um, if I'm around smaller bass in general that I'm trying to catch, I'm going to go with the smaller one. If not, I'm going to use the bigger one just to try to get a little bit bigger bite. Um, and overall, um, the Spunk Shad, like I said, is probably my favorite chatterbait trailer. Um, if I had to pick one, that's probably the one that I'm going to pick. Transitioning over to um, more of a crawl style trailer, um, I wouldn't necessarily categorize these first two as a crawl, crawl style trailer um, because I feel like they work in all situations. Um, and that, that would be that big bite bait kamikaze swim on. Um, this does have a split tail on it. Um, very similar to some sort of crawl style trailer um, however this thing when you are reeling it through the water just kind of straight retrieving it or you're popping your rod a little bit this thing has some crazy action um, these two tails they just go crazy um, and it it's, I don't know how well you can see this but right before those tails there's like a ribbed part of the body and very similar to that Zayko, um, when that thing gets kicking, it has a ton of action. Um, so I really like this um, when I have, I'm fishing around really active fish um, that are up actively feeding because this thing has um, such crazy action. Um, that action tends to draw some more bites. And then the other, co um, this color here, sorry, was pearl. I really like that on my white chatterbaits. Um, and then if I'm going with a more natural color, um, this is that one I talked about earlier with that tungsten thunder cricket. This is that um, green pumpkin chartreuse swirl. As you can see, there's some chartreuse in that. There's some green pumpkin in that. And then the little tips of it um, kind of has that chartreuse look to it. And that's the one that I said um, I really like when bluegill were up shallow. Um, just because with that, like more of a green pumpkin style chatterbait does a really good job of mimicking bluegill.
Uh, the remaining chatterbait trailers that I'm going to talk about, with the exception of one, are true crawl style uh, profiles. Um, and they just have little subtle differences that I like um, in, in different situations. Um, so the first two I'm gonna, uh, the first three I'm gonna talk about is more of like a hybrid. And what I mean by that is one of my favorite ways to work a chatterbait is the exact same way you would work a jig. Um, just kind of hopping it or dragging it along the bottom real, real slow. And these trailers work really well for that. But because the reason why I call them hybrid trailers is because they also have really good action when you're just straight retrieving those. Um, and they're three different brands um, and just things that I've noticed as I've fished them. The first one that I'm going to talk about is the Six Cents Bongo. Um, and you're going to notice um, a couple of these have very similar designs to them. Um, this is just like a almost looks like a Ned um, body to it and then it has these two appendages and these appendages have like little um, like flared designs on the end of it and it just causes those to have a lot of kicking action um, when you're moving it really slow like kind of dragging it really slow on the bottom or when you're straight retrieving it these things they kick pretty good um, this color right here is green pumpkin blue flake um, again very natural um, typically if I'm fishing my chatterbait on the bottom um, the water is going to be clear um, and I'm going to be fishing it really really slow so I want something kind of with those little flanges at the end to give it a pretty good action the other one um, very similar design this is the reaction innovation spicy beaver um, very very similar design has the the little flanges at, on the tail section of it um, this color here is Florabama I really like this color specifically when um, it's a little more stained water obviously this is very very natural that bongo the green pumpkin blue um, so I like that in really clear water. This one I like in a little more stained water because you can fish it if the water's clear, it has very natural side to it, but it also has this side that's a little more of a, a darker color and that stands out in that little bit more stained water. Like I said, as you're reeling this, these tails, they have a lot of good action. The other one um, that I would classify in that hybrid category um, this is the Netbait Paca Slim. This is the 4-inch. This one's in June Bug. Um, that's just the one that I pulled out. Um, this one, um, these claws are really, really thin, and they kind of taper out um, towards the end of them, um, and it gives them really good action as well. Um, just looking at this, it doesn't look like it would have like a ton of action in the claws because it doesn't have that same flange um, edge to them but um, this one really stood out to me I was watching a tactical bass and um, underwater video and to see the action of this it really stood out to me as they were straight retrieving a chatterbait obviously this is going to look really good on the bottom um, because it has that crawl profile as you're working it like a jig but when you're straight retrieving this these claws are kicking and then all of a sudden they just one will kick out to the side and then they'll be kicking and then the other one will kick out to the side it just looks really good underwater um, obviously, if I'm using this, I'm probably not going to be using a June bug unless it's dirtier water. Um, but the color itself, um, just going to depend on the water clarity. All right, last two trailers. Um, these are more of your traditional crawl style trailers. This is, I'm not re reeling a chatterbait. I'm not straight retrieving it. This is me dragging it along the bottom like a jig. Um, also. Um, you know, you know, hopping it off the bottom a little bit, but letting it rest on bottom majority of the time. Um, and the one I'm going to use first off is a Strike King Rage Crawl. Um, I just really, really like the Strike King Rage Crawl. This might be my favorite crawl. Um, obviously, I can use it in a ton of different colors depending on water clarity. Um, as far as this one goes, it does have the flange 
you could straight retrieve it. I just really like the rage crawl worked on bottom. It just seems to get bit no matter how you're using it. Um, so if you throw it on the back of a chatterbait, even better. Um, so yeah, this one right here is the um, blue crawl color. It's that kind of green pumpkin with a blue tint to it. Um, and then the other one, same kind of deal. Um, very different design though. This is the six cent stroker crawl. Um, where this one really shines for me um, in the same situation working along the bottom um, but a chatterbait is one of my favorite lures to skip under cover um, under docks um, things like that and this trailer um, if you're not that great at skipping it really really helps with that because it's kind of this wider but flatter profile and if you can see that's kind of flat but it's also really wide. So if you rig that um, with that flatter side down on a chatterbait, um, it really helps you um, skip that a little bit better. Um, so this one, if I'm dragging a chatterbait on the bottom, working it like a jig, and I'm really trying to skip way back into cover, um, this is a good trailer option. And like I said, it has those crawl appendages as well. The last trailer I want to talk about um, is a little different. Um, I wouldn't necessarily categorize this in the crawl profile at all. Um, I don't know if I would even categorize this in um, the bait fish profile. Um, but this is a trailer that I really like in pressured situations or really, really clear water. Um, I said in those situations I'm picking up the Chatterbait Mini Max. Um, I actually have this trailer on there. Um, it's just a zoom split tail trailer. And I have one here. Um, it's not on a chatterbait just so you can see it. Um, this is in the pearl color. Um, like I said, that's the exact same trailer that I have on um, the Mini Max. Um, the reason why I really like this trailer, um, it matches that downsize profile of that Mini Max and, um, it has really good action in the water. Um, these appendages will move together or they can move separately depending on how you're working that chatterbait and how aggressive you are um, when you're when you're fishing that thing. Um, obviously it doesn't look anything like anything special. It's literally just a, a round piece of plastic with two long appendages on it. Like I said, it matches that downsize profile. I really like that, like I said, in pressured situations. So that's going to wrap up um, kind of the trailer portion of this. Um, and before I get into kind of just talking about some of the different retrieves that I really like, uh, I want to just talk very briefly about the gear that I fish my chatterbait on. Um, and I will tell you, I'm different from a lot of people when it comes to chatterbait fishing. A lot of people prefer um, something similar to a crankbait rod, I'm a little bit more moderate of an action. Um, I, d I don't, um, just because of how I like to fish my chatterbait. Um, the rod and reel setup that I like to use on my chatterbaits, um, this is a Hank Parker uh, Signature Speed Stick. Um, this is like a $40 rod from Walmart. Um, I can't explain how much I like this rod for chatterbaits though. Um, the rod itself is a 7 foot medium heavy fast action. Um, and for a, a cheaper rod, um, this one is probably my favorite for chatterbaits. And I've tried a bunch of different rods with chatterbaits. This is the one I keep coming back to as my favorite. Um, the reason why I like this is it's really sensitive um, as far as telling the action of the chatterbait. Um, with chatterbaits, a lot of the time, um, you may not feel bite. You might just feel the blade stop moving. Um, and the tip of this rod just goes crazy when you're reeling a chatterbait or popping a chatterbait um, through the water. You can instantly feel um, the blade movement. And I, that's why I like um, a little bit more faster action rod for my chatterbaits. I know a lot of people, the reason they prefer the crankbait rod or crankbait style rod, more moderate action, it has a lot more bend to the tip of it. And, you know, when they set the hook, um, they don't rip the, the hook out of the fish's mouth with the chatterbait. 
um, because a lot of the time the fish will come up behind it and they'll just barely grab a hold of it. Um, like I said, a lot of the time the you just feel the blade stop um, vibrating back and forth when you're um, fishing a chatterbait. Um, and when you have that little bit more moderate action, it allows that fish to, to suck that chatterbait in a little bit better. Um, I've gotten really good at just kind of pausing um, for a split second before I set the hook um, when I feel that bite or when I feel that blade stop moving. So with this fast action rod, I, I don't tend to miss a lot of fish on a chatterbait simply because um, I've kind of gotten used to fishing on this. Um, but the reason why I like the rod so much is because of the different ways I like to fish a chatterbait. And you're going to see when I talk about retrieves, I like to work my chatterbaits off quite often like a jig along the bottom. So I want a little stiffer rod for that. I also like to fish my chatterbaits around cover and I like to be able to get my fish out of cover. Um, so I, I don't necessarily want a crankbait style rod for that. Um, as far as the reel goes, um, this is probably my favorite $100 reel I've ever used. Um, this is the Luz LFS. Um, almost seems like this reel is bulletproof. Um, I have used it um, for a couple years now. Um, and thing is as smooth as could be, especially at the $100 price point. Um, and when I bought this one, I actually got it on sale for $70. And you, you just can't beat that um, for a reel this good. Um, as far as line go, that 17 pound Seaguar and Vizex fluorocarbon. Um, I like the, that heavier line. I know some people will drop down to 15 pound line on their chatterbaits, but because I like to fish this around heavy cover, um, wood, laydowns, grass, stuff like that, I step my a line up to 17 pound. Um, and every once in a while, I, I might go up to 20 pound, depending on how heavy the cover is. Um, but majority of the time, I'm fishing 17 pound. Um, fluorocarbon. Alright guys, as far as retrieve on a chatterbait, um, I don't believe there's a wrong way to work this. Um, I definitely believe that um, in different situations you're going to get more bites doing different types, types of retrieves. Um, so just to demonstrate a couple of my favorite retrieves, I have tied on a uh, Z-Man chatterbait elite in white. And then I have a hog farmer spunk shad trailer on that. Um, so the first one is by far the most basic. All you're going to do is just cast it out and you're just going to straight retrieve it. Um, slow to medium speed. Um, I feel like works the best. You don't want to get too fast with it. Um, but a chatterbait is one of those um, lures that you can burn right near the surface and it will draw some bites. Um, as far as my favorite retrieve on a chatterbait what I like to do is I like to cast it out um, and then just start reeling and then pop my rod a few times um, and I do that throughout the retrieve um, I like to do that a lot especially when I'm fishing overhanging cover um, or boats boat docks boat lifts when I'm skipping up under stuff um, I do that just I feel like it triggers a lot of bites um, and a lot of these um, retrieves that you're gonna see uh, um, or a lot of the fish catches you're gonna see in this video uses that exact retrieve um, that's my favorite retrieve like I said I feel like it catches really big fish um, overall a couple other retrieves that you can do is you just cast it out start reeling and then just stop pause it keep reeling pause it and just to stop and go retrieve um, the other thing you can do is on a straight retrieve, um, give your reel um, a real quick twitch of the handle. Um, sometimes that will trigger some bites as well. So if I'm reeling, steady retrieve, pop, pop my reel, pop my reel. Um, that has a lot of the same effect as, um, you know, popping the rod. I just like to pop the rod. I feel like I have more control over the rod that way. Um, some other retrieves that you can do. Um, what I like to do if the fish are really pressured is uh, cast it out there, let it hit bottom, let it sink to bottom, and then just slow retrieve it where it's just barely ticking along the bottom. Um, this is a good way to draw a lot of bites. Um, I like this one um, right after the spawn. I feel like that's a good retrieve there um, as fish are kind of lethargic and stuff. Um, and they don't want to... Um, 
chase as much. Um, so sometimes you'll get it and they'll, they'll hit that one real hard. They'll pin it down to the bottom. Um, that's a pretty good, pretty good setup there. Pretty good retrieve. Um, some other retrieves. Um, this one's kind of my favorite um, for when fish are aggressive. You cast it out, you let it hit bottom. And then what you're gonna do, um, kind of like you would stroke a jig, you just rip it up off the bottom. And I like to hold my rod tip there, or hold my rod tip high so I can feel that thump if they hit it on the way back down. Um, and then the same thing, let it fall back to bottom, rip it up off the bottom. And you're gonna just keep doing that, rip it up off the bottom, all the way back to the boat. Um, there's two times when a fish will hit it on that um, retrieve. They'll hit it as soon as you start to rip it up off the bottom because they're nose down on it. Um, the other time is they'll hit it on the fall. Um, different chatterbaits have different actions on the fall. Um, I just learned this um, in a couple of videos that I watched on YouTube. Um, Bass Fishing HQ has one um, where he um, rips a chatterbait up off the bottom and then lets it fall so you can see the action. Um, and definitely not all chatterbaits are created equal on the fall. Um, the other um, retrieves that you can do with a chatterbait if you cast it out, just work it like a jig. Um, if you, oh, this is where I really like the crawl style trailers on a chatterbait. You can just drag it along the bottom. And then that skirt, when it stops, that skirt will flare out. Um, the other type of retrieve you can do, um, just like if you're working a jig, is you stroke a jig, little two pops off the bottom, let it fall back down. Um, that one's a really good retrieve as well. Um, the other ways that I like to work my jig is a little hop hop off the bottom, just a little hop. So I let it sink, and then I hop up off the bottom, let it sink, hop hop off the bottom, hop off the bottom. Um, it works really well for chatterbaits as well. Um, the difference between a jig and a chatterbait on that is you get that vibration, that blade um, hitting against the head of the chatterbait and it tends to draw more bites, I feel like. Um, that's like I said, I like to use a crawl tra style trailer for that. Um, other retrieves that work really well, um, this one, I really like in the winter time if I'm fishing a chatterbait or right in the heat of the summer. I'm gonna cast it out. I'm just gonna let it sit on bottom. Just let it sit there. Um, this one I like to dead stick it. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna reel down, lift up to see if there's weight. If there's not, I'll drag it a little bit and then just dead stick it, let it sit there. Um, the colder the water temperature, the longer I let it sit there. Lift up, no weight, drag it. And I just do that all the way back to the boat. Definitely not my favorite way to fish it, but you would be surprised at how many bites you get doing just that. Um, overall, like I said, there's not really a wrong way to fish a chatterbait. Those are just some of my favorite retrieves. Um, like I said, uh, I just feel like different style trailers um, lead to different actions and those actions are going to play huge on the type of trailer that you're um, using with the different type of retrieve. So if, like I said, if I'm gonna hop a jig or a chatterbait along the bottom, I wanna make sure I'm using more of a crawl style profile um, just to mimic the forage. Um, you could also use some bait fish profiles on a chatterbait if you're doing that, just to kind of mimic a, a dead bait fish or a dying bait fish. Um, but I tend to have more success using the crawl style trailers while doing that. Um, um, overall, like I said, not a wrong way to fish a chatterbait. And I think trailer styles um, and colors of chatterbaits play a huge role in that along with the retrieve. Um, so yeah, that's going to wrap the retrieve po portion of the video. Um, um, so with that being said guys, we're gonna go ahead and wrap the video um, Hopefully I was able to provide some insight on Chatterbait fishing as far as retrieves trailers um, Different types of chatterbaits and when to use those um, And hopefully you guys were able to take something away from the video 
Um, I doubt very many people's made it this far, but I do want to say thank you for watching. Um, and drop a comment down below and let me know what you thought. Um, and maybe you would want to see some more videos like this. Um, obviously, I'm nowhere close to an expert fisherman or whatever, but uh, a chatterbait is um, one of those techniques that I feel like um, if there's one that I could talk about, um, one that I feel like I'm, I'm fairly decent at fishing, it would have to be a chatterbait. Um, so if there's anything like this that you would like to see, um, obviously I need to put some more time in on the water with some different techniques, but um, drop some comments down below and let me know what you'd like to see. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Thank you.